Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. In 1967, director Mike Nichols gave us an independent romantic comedy drama film that shook audiences up. That film was The Graduate. It was written by Buck Henry and Calder Willingham and was based on the 1963 novel that bore the same name by Charles Webb. He penned this story shortly after he graduated from Williams College. The storyline follows Benjamin Braddock, played by Dustin Hoffman, as he's just finished college and is back at his parents' house where he's trying to avoid the one question that everyone keeps asking him. What do you want to do with your life? An unexpected diversion crops up when he is seduced by Mrs. Robinson, played by Anne Bancroft. She's a bored housewife and friend of his parents. But what begins as a fun tryst turns complicated when Benjamin falls for the one woman Miss Robinson demanded that he stay away from, that being her daughter, Elaine played by Katherine Ross. The movie was released in December of 1967 to critical and commercial success. It grossed around $104 million in the United States and Canada, making it the highest grossing picture for that year. It also received seven nominations for an Academy Award, including Best Picture and Best Director. With Best Director, being the one that the film won. Getting the project made was very difficult for director Nichols, who at the time was noted for being a successful Broadway director, but was still a complete unknown in Hollywood. With Nichols set to direct, the studio continually turned the idea down for the financing. They then contacted producer Joseph Levine, who said he would finance the film, because he had been associated with Nichols and because he had heard that Elizabeth Taylor specifically wanted Nichols to direct her and Richard Burton in Virginia Woolf. With financing then assured, Nichols suggested Buck Henry as the screenwriter for the project. Nichols then got busy with casting. His first choice for Ms. Robinson was French actress Janine Moreau. The motivation for this was the cliché that in the French culture, older women tended to train the younger men in sexual matters. There were also quite a few other actresses that were considered or sought for the film. Doris Day turned it down because of the nudity required for the role. Shelley Winters, Eva Marie Saint, Ava Gardner, Patricia Neal, Susan Hayward, and a handful of others were also considered for this part. Dustin Hoffman was cast in the Mel Brooks film, The Producers. But before filming began on that project, Hoffman begged Brooks to let him go audition for The Graduate. When he auditioned for the role of Benjamin, he was just short of his 30th birthday. In the audition, he was asked to perform a love scene with Ross, having previously never done one and he had trouble in his own mind thinking that a girl like Ross would ever go for a guy like him in a million years. Ross also felt the same way. She believed that Hoffman looked like he was about three feet tall and so unkept and just didn't fit her ideal. They both felt it would be a disaster. Actress Ann Bancroft loved Mike Nichols' description that he gave to her about Miss Robinson. He said that she was somebody that was angry with herself for giving up on who she really was in exchange for wealth and security. Nichols thought this was very important and that he wanted her character to drive home the point about her having bargained away her life. Back then, audiences had no idea that Catherine Ross was 27 years old. She turned 28 soon after the film opened. This was a mere eight years younger than her on-screen mother, Anne Bancroft. Like many actresses back then, she lied about her age and was able to get away with it until later on in her career. 
when public records became readily available online. When Dustin Hoffman first did a rehearsal for the scene in which he knocks on the glass wall at the back of the church, his pounding caused the entire wall to shake. At that point, the frustrated church's priest threatened to throw the entire film company out of the church. A crew member then suggested that Hoffman spread his arms wide and knock softly. This posture has led many to think that it was symbolic of the crucifixion of Christ. But it wasn't. It was a production decision that was done to avoid damaging an on-site location. Even after they began sleeping together, Benjamin never calls Miss Robinson anything other than Miss Robinson. We never learn what her first name is, nor the first name of any of the other adults in the movie. Only Benjamin and his peers are the ones that have first names. This was done as an underscoring of the generation gap that was at the heart of the movie. Paul Simon had been contracted to write three new songs for the film, but it only produced one by the time editing was nearly done. Nichols ended up pestering Simon, saying that he needed more, anything, just give him something. Simon then told him that he had a new number that he was working on, but it wasn't for the movie. It was a song about times past, about Mrs. Roosevelt and Joe DiMaggio, and stuff like that. Nichols then told him it's about Miss Robinson and not Miss Roosevelt anymore, and the rest is history. The iconic image of Benjamin looking at Mrs. Robinson's leg doesn't really feature the actual leg of Anne Bancroft. Believe it or not, that's Linda Gray's leg, best known for playing Sue Ellen on Dallas. She was paid $25 for that picture of her extremity. The whole time that Dustin Hoffman was trying out for this role, he didn't feel like he fit it. He felt like he was completely wrong for it, but he wanted it. During the screen test, he worried that it wasn't going well. And in an effort to lessen the tension, he patted and pinched Catherine Ross's behind. This ended up angering her, and she berated him for it. As he ended up leaving the audition, he thought he didn't get the role. But Mike Nichols thought just the opposite. His awkwardness was just what he needed for the role of Benjamin Braddock. Go back and take a look at this fascinating film from the 1960s. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.